There are so many ways we communicate every day, whether it's in person, through text, or social media. Commenting on posts, sharing stories or snaps, we are pretty much connected 24-7. But with all that contact, we also need to make sure we're respecting each other 24-7. Sometimes people post things that are completely inappropriate, and other times people say things they don't even realize are offensive. Did you know that you can get in trouble at school for posting inappropriate messages, photos, or videos, even if you aren't in school when you posted them? Think about it. Making negative comments about someone's race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, religion, disability, or gender can seriously affect their ability to focus on schoolwork or participate in school activities. It can also violate your student code of conduct. What you say, text, or post may even be against the law if it includes threats, violence, or is sexually explicit. As students, it's our responsibility to make sure we don't engage in bias-based behavior or sexual misconduct. And when we see it happen, it's important to report it so we can all feel safe, welcomed, and respected in or outside of school. In this video, we'll explore scenarios based on real-life experiences students face. We'll talk about what bias-based behavior and sexual misconduct look like, how to report these incidents when they occur, and how we can take steps to create a safe and inclusive environment for all. Unfortunately, offensive racial comments are common when it comes to texting and social media. That doesn't just include racial slurs. Sometimes people don't even realize they're making offensive, generalized statements about entire groups of people. What do you think about this text exchange? Hi, Dahlia. Hi. Look. Pause the video and take a moment to discuss these questions. What did Armani do wrong? How do you think Armani's comment made Mia feel? Could Dahlia have intervened? If so, how? Would Dahlia get in trouble for posting the GIF? In this scenario, Armani made a comment and Dahlia sent a gif they thought was funny, but both communicated stereotypes about a community of color. Armani and Dahlia could be disciplined for violating school policy. If Armani or Dahlia do this multiple times or use a racial slur, they could face even more severe consequences. Mia could start by talking to her friends, telling them she found their comments offensive. She also has the right to report this situation, even though this conversation happened outside of school. Mia could document the text exchange by taking a screenshot and then tell the school administrator what happened. Discuss with your teacher who you can report bias-based incidents to at your school. Let's take a look at our next scenario. You're so gay. <laughs> <laughs> no way, girl. Pause the video and take a moment to discuss these questions. 
How do you think John felt when he received the photo? What about when Marcella sent the emoji? Do you think this could make John feel excluded at school or make it harder for John to focus on his schoolwork? How might it impact John if Marcella shares this photo with others? What do you think John should do next? Marcella expressing disgust about John's sexual orientation is bias-based behavior that could be devastating for John and could get Marcella in trouble. John could save a screenshot or write down a description of what happened. If John knows anyone else who saw what took place, he could ask them to write it down too. John could also present this information to a school administrator to make sure this incident is addressed, so Marcella won't say or do anything like that again to John or anyone else. Pause the video and discuss what you could say to John to help encourage him to report what happened to a school administrator. Students are protected from bias-based conduct based on national origin or ethnicity, including culture, language, or accent. Take a look at this situation. Hoy es el cumpleaños de mi abuelita querida María. Cierro los ojos y solo me imagino el valor que tuvo en dejar su hogar para un mejor futuro acá en los Estados Unidos. Cuando tengo temor o duda de algo, Veo así a mi abuela y a los restos de mis antepasados, y me lleno de fuerza. Le doy gracias a la vida por tenerla cerca de mí. ¡Feliz cumpleaños, abuelita! ¿Quieres venir a mi casa después de las clases? Sí, tengo una cita después de mi clase, pero puedo estar ahí como a las cuatro. Creo que tengo que estar en mi casa para cenar, pero puedo chequear y dejarte saber. Solo mándame un mensaje de texto. Si tenemos que hacerlo, Julian y yo podemos empezar el proyecto sin ti. Is she like speaking Spanish so much? She just go back to Mexico. <laughs> Pause the video and take a moment to discuss these questions. How do you think Clarisol felt when she received the comment on Instagram? Would you have reported the comment Dave sent? What do you think Clarisol should do next? Do you think Clarisol will feel comfortable speaking Spanish in school or on Instagram in the future? If something like this happened to you, would you feel less comfortable speaking your first language or sharing your culture at school after that? Remember to take a quick screenshot and save it. If an incident happens in person, write up a description of the incident. You can share the screenshot or written statement with the school administrator. Also, encourage others who witnessed the incident to share what they saw. One of the most serious mistakes you can make is sharing sexual pictures, videos, or comments. Sexting is against school policy, and it's also against the law for anyone under 18 to take, send, or possess sexual videos or pictures. Let's take a look at this scene. Hey, Mari, are you okay? Nico and I broke up this weekend. Yeah, I heard. Well, when we were together, I sent him a nude picture, and he'd promised he'd delete it. Really? Wow. Yeah, and he sent it to all of his friends, and now everyone's looking at me weird and making mean comments. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. Pause the video and take a moment to discuss these questions. How do you think Maria feels about Nico sharing her photo? 
Could Maria get in trouble for sending the initial photo? Could the students who made comments to Maria get in trouble? How could Clarisol support Maria to report what happened? If Maria is afraid to report the incident, could Clarisol? In this scenario, not only can Nico be disciplined, but depending on the severity of the issue, law enforcement can be involved. The other students could also be disciplined for making unwanted sexual comments to Maria or for saving the image on their phones. Remember, once you hit send, you never know if your text or post might be shared. Imagine a family member, coach, or teacher seeing it. If someone screenshots what you write or post, it can exist forever and be shared with anyone. If you experience or witness bias-based conduct or sexual misconduct, reach out for help. Whether it's being ridiculed because of your religion, sexual orientation, race, or disability, or you experience or witness unwanted sexual comments, photos, videos, or touching, it's important to report and address these incidents so that the behavior stops and you can get the support you need. Think about the words and images you're choosing before you hit the send button. Ask yourself, is it welcome? Is it true? Is it kind? Or are you perpetuating stereotypes or making fun of someone's identity? Remember, you can't take words back or hit unsend. Pause to think before you speak, text, or post. We hope this is the beginning of an ongoing conversation that will help make our communities more safe, supportive, and inclusive. We're all in school to learn and prepare for college and career. So it is crucial that each of us, students, educators, and administrators, are committed to maintaining an environment free of bias-based behavior and sexual misconduct. If we work together, we can make sure all students are treated with respect 24-7.